The First Sunday After Christmas, Year B, from the Gospel according to John. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In the name of Jesus, the world's true light. Amen. Here we are. Three days after Christmas, and I imagine Mary, in some hour before dawn, rising wearily to feed her infant son. There, in the darkness, he's the only thing that matters. The Word became flesh and lived among us, but in those pre-dawn moments, after the shepherds and before the wise men, it was just the two of them. In dark and cold days like these, we have a strong need to remind ourselves that the same God who gives snow like wool and scatters hoarfrost like ashes, who scatters hail like breadcrumbs so that none can stand against his cold, also cares for us, enough to hear us when we cry and having heard and come to heal our broken hearts and bind up our wounds. We ignore our own need for such care at our peril. Our reading from the letter to the Galatians reminds us, however, that we are no longer children, guarded but also imprisoned. We now are heirs, stewards, and caretakers of creation. Into the silence of the stable breaks the infant's cry, Abba, Father, or perhaps something decidedly less articulate. Suddenly, We no longer know whose cry it is, whether it's the child in the manger or the weary world around us, or our own hearts crying out with grief and dismay. What we do know is that we must respond, not out of fear of punishment from some all-seeing disciplinarian, but out of the love we bear for the one whose voice we hear. For this moment, then, let us be that love for God, for the world, for ourselves. For although the world around us remains as yet cold and dark, we know that the true light which enlightens everyone has come into the world, and the darkness has not overcome it. In the name of that true light, even Christ our Lord. Amen.